Hello, everybody. Welcome. We had a slight delay, but only because the minister was jumping from one place to another. She was in the house uh, working, so no problem there. Here we are. Welcome to all of you. I'm Andrew Wadden. And as you know, I'm the chair for 2020 the St. John's Board of Trade. We're really glad to be able to bring you uh, today, especially in the week where it's obviously so relevant, our, our Minister of Finance, Siobhan Cody. Now, as you all know, the Minister of Finance uh, is absolutely no stranger to business in Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm not going to list off all her experience in that realm, but many of, you know, many of you would know rather that before entering the realm of politics, uh, she was chair of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. She was chair of the St. John Ford Trade many years ago. And uh, obviously many of you would know as well that she was president and CEO of Newfoundland Genomics. She has been recognized actually for helping strengthen the chamber movement in Atlantic Canada. Now these are just some of the things that have led her to her roles in uh, federal politics and now obviously provincial politics. Members are eager to discuss this week's budget. And of course, one of the topics we're going to get into today is the new $25 million announced for small business in this week's budget. And that's something that the St. John's Board of Trade advocated for uh, to the Department of Finance over the past couple of months. And we're very pleased that the minister heard us. We're also going to get into what needs to happen leading into the next budget, which, believe it or not, obviously is only another six months away. So with that, I want to hand the conversation off to our CEO, someone who our board is very happy to now have fighting for members, Anne-Marie Boudreaux. Anne-Marie? Thank you, Andrew. And welcome, everyone. And thank you for taking the time today to, uh, to join us for this important discussion. And once again, I'd like to extend thank you to, uh, to Minister Cody for taking time this afternoon. I think, as Andrew said, you know, on the heels of uh, on what was a very big day on Wednesday and to, to get this time on Friday with Minister Cody and have the opportunity to hear from her and to ask questions is very, very valuable to us. So much appreciate that, Minister Cody. Uh, before we kick off a few housekeeping items, we would ask that everyone, um, for audio purposes, everyone keep their mics muted. Uh, we are going to record this uh, webinar and we will make it available on our, um, on our webpage, on our on-demand where we keep all of our webinars. So we'll upload it there. And so if everyone can keep their mics uh, muted, that would be very helpful. Uh, we do have a chat function that you will see on the bottom of your screen. And if you would like, when Minister Cody finishes, if you would like to ask a question, or even in the meantime, if you'd like to pop a question into the chat that we can cover uh, when Minister Cody is finished, we're, we'll be happy to do that. So I will uh, turn it over to uh, Minister Cody. I think, Minister, we certainly have been, uh, we've been excited since Wednesday. We've been excited to have time with you uh, but also I know you know I've been hearing from and having conversations with members since Wednesday who were delighted uh, for the small business assistance program that was launched so I, I can assure you that there are likely people on here this this afternoon who are very keen and eager to hear a little bit more about that program but I know you're going to give us a little bit of an overview and a breakdown of what we heard on Wednesday and then we'll ask you some questions so if you want to take it away Minister Cody Thank you very much. I'm going to just turn to my assistant and say, get a copy of the budget speech for me, please. Thanks. Sorry, I just want to make sure I have a copy of it in front of me. But thank you all for joining me this afternoon. And my most sincere apologies, I was in the House of Assembly and being grilled uh, on the uh, estimates for finance. And I did, I, I couldn't leave uh, in the moment that I needed to be here with you. So thank you for indulging me by giving me a couple of extra minutes to come running out and uh, sit down in front of you. So allow me to just kind of put in context about Wednesday's budget. First of all, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So the budget uh, really did uh, recognize that it's very important for us to focus on our families and focus on supports for business and focus on managing our way through a pandemic at this point in time. So I'll, I'll say that in that uh, it, did, it didn't have a multi-year budget, meaning it didn't get into you know when we're gonna return to surplus. It didn't talk about multi-years, thank you very much. It didn't talk about multi-years in, um, in terms of the budget, which is a normal budgetary process. Uh, because for three real, four really 
important reasons. First of all, we don't have the federal government's budget as yet, so we don't know the balances and uh, that they may be or the investments they be, may be making uh, to provinces uh, during this time. Secondly, uh, the revenues and the expenses are still very volatile, and this is a, not a Newfoundland and Labrador phenomenon, not a Canadian, it's a global phenomenon. So, uh, and, and the fourth thing I will say is we also are talking about how we reimagine uh, government services, how we fix some of the structural challenges uh, going forward, and how we really address uh, some of the long-standing challenges in our in, in our finances for the province. And all you know, we're, we've started down that road. So for those very good reasons, I'll say that this is a, a budget for COVID and it's a budget that will, you know, it, the, the six months time, we're gonna have another budget. So I wanted to make sure you understood that. I've spent some time talking to the bond rating agencies about those, about those issues as well and making sure that they understand uh, why this is only a budget for one year because I, I, I do know there were some people saying, you know, why don't we have more of a, a runway on that? So what does this budget do? First of all, I wanted to say that I spoke about right from the very beginning, how important it is to get our structural uh, challenges, so structural financial challenges under control. And, and I mean this with all sincerity. I do know that we can do this. I think that we're ready for it as a province. I think that we do need big, bold ideas of how that might occur. And I will be asking you and challenging you and, and, and asking for your contributions. And Andrew and I have already had that, um, that discussion already of how important it will be to hear your ideas and uh, put as much on the wall as we possibly can. As a business person, you know, and I know how important it is to throw everything at the wall, do the analysis and then determine uh, what what's the best foot forward. And we also have engaged on a volunteer basis, um, a very, uh, very important person, I think, uh, from Newfoundland and Labrador's perspective, Dean Moya Green. Uh, she has an international reputation as a change manager. She's worked with the federal government as, you know, during the 1990s when they were getting their fiscal house in order, and also uh, went on to do um, the, the same kind of change management uh, in both the, uh, the Canada Post and then the Royal Mail in the United Kingdom. So she'll look at, you know, our expenditures across government. She's going to look at our, you know, fiscal capacity, and she'll also uh, look at how we reimagine, reimagine government services. So I wanted to put that context there. Now, in the budget, what are some of the key announcements? Well, um, you know, about a, I'm only in this post now, probably, what, less than six weeks. Um, but uh, the St. John's Board of Trade, uh, within the first couple of days that I was, uh, I was sitting here uh, in, in finance, uh, Andrew and Anne-Marie asked for a meeting and they uh, talked to me about some of the concerns of the business community and, uh, and some of the things that we should be considering. And I, was, uh, I took their advice uh, very much uh, to heart and started to look at what we, what we could possibly do. And um, that's why we came up with the $25 million program for small business. And also why, because I think Penny Rowe, I think I, think I saw her I come on board as well. We also heard very loudly um, from the community, uh, community sector that they were struggling as well. Now I know that the federal government has been very involved in this in, in great deals of assistance and we're for that we're all grateful but was there something more we could do and we talked I, you know we went back and forth with Andrew and Amory quite a bit on what you know what a program might look like so we've tried to make it as simple and as streamlined and as quick and as responsible as we possibly can. And I will say that I think we've struck a balance. I don't think the parameters right yet have been outlined, but I'll, I'll, I won't, I'll, I'll wait for those to, to kind of come out fulsome, but you, you'll be able to apply online. It'll be a stipend and it'll be, um, it'll be uh, uh, stacked so that, you know, for example, you know, small, the smallest of the small will get a certain amount, the medium, and then a little bit larger. It's for 99 employee, employees and, 
and below. Um, and we're trying to get a, you know, a, 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 an amount of money in your hands to help address some of your concerns around COVID, uh, the costs of COVID, around the, um, you know, some of the other struggles that you might have had, whether it was, you know, whatever you whatever you've had to do, whether it's plexiglass or whether it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, PPE that you might have had to uh, had to uh, invest in, or whether you've had to do something uh, to uh, to, make, to make sure your online presence is uh, is even uh, you know ramped up or uh, delivery systems ramped up. So uh, that that should be very much available to you very quickly. Uh, it'll be a quick application. We only have twenty five million dollars, so get your applications in as quickly as possible. And, um, and then there's 5 million, as I say, earmarked for, and I'll use Lions Clubs uh, and various other community, uh, community uh, in partners that have been struggling as well. And so um, I thank uh, the St. John's Board of Trade for raising that. They also raised, and I have raised it federally on two different, no, three different occasions now with uh, Minister Friedland and my colleagues across the country. And that is around the issue around the rent program, the rent supplement program. So um, we, we've, we've been able to advance that. I will also say in the in the budget, I think there's 2.7 million dollars. I'm just flicking my pages to try and get to the right page here. Uh, 2.7 million dollars that Natty, working with Natty, they'll be able to provide to the business community, and that again is for assistance for uh, you know kind of innovations and developments that you might be making, and that program will be delivered through Natty, and uh, and we're looking forward to that. Um, I'm just, uh, yeah, it's $2.7 million through Natty on the Business Technology Solutions Program. And businesses can access that money for assistance to purchase digital solutions or access that expertise. So I'm glad to see that program there as well. I will also say that there has been other uh, particular investments along the way. One I think is very important, I think is very important for the business community. And I remember when I was president of the Board of Trade, that was before Chair Andrew, president of the Board of Trade back 25 years ago in the early 1990s, thank you, in the early 1990s, uh, you know, talking about how important uh, child care is to the business community and how important it would be to ensure that we have affordable uh, child care. And now we've been able to announce in this budget uh, $25 a day child care that'll be coming into effect in 2021. And we know from the Conference Board of Canada that for every dollar invested in child care, you get a $6 return to your GDP. So this is, this is uh, I think, very, um, very important to the business community. I'll also say I'll, 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 I'll say a few other things that are in the budget, and then I'm going to pause because if anyone knows me, knows that I could probably <laughs> talk for the next three hours on this stuff. Um, there's 17 million dollars uh, for research and development, re commercialization, and business development. There's 10 million dollars for regional and the sectoral economic initiatives. Um, there's uh, supports for the arts, uh, sorry, for, sorry for the tourism and culture industries, and of course, 13 million dollars in tourism marketing and um, four million dollars to support film and television production and we this is the first time ever we have two uh two film and, and television productions underway in the province and, and that's generating some uh, uh, really good uh, economic stim stimulus to the pro province so i'm going to pause for a moment and just say that there we also talked in the in the budget speech about oil and gas and and look we all know that oil and gas um you know, the value to the province can't be overstated and nor can it be easily replaced. And I say that sincerely and know that we have as a province looked to see what possible things that we can do. And that's why we have the Accelerated Exploration Initiative and that basically takes any of the bid, bid deposit forfeitures that would have come back to the coffers of the province and basically, you know, we'll, we'll turn them back into in initiatives uh, that will go back into making sure that there's drilling offshore Newfoundland and Labrador. You all know, you've heard how, how very uh, prospective offshore Newfoundland and Labrador is. We know that um, we have 640 
opportunities out there, uh, leads and prospects out there. We know that in just one uh, section of our offshore, we have 52 billion barrels that we've seen through seismic. We have to, we have to actually get out there and do some drilling around it. So um, in, you know, we want to encourage uh, the development of offshore Newfoundland and Labrador and always remember that that is one of the lowest carbon per barrels oils in the world. So not only do we want it as Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, you know, for the growth and development and opportunities that it does provide, but we also want it on the global supply chains. Um, so on that, Emory, I'll pause and I can speak uh, more on some of the other things that are in the budget, but those are kind of the highlights that come off the top of my head that I think are important to the business community. So Emory. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I, I'll ask a question or two. I'll certainly invite, uh, you know, if anyone has a question, they're welcome to use the chat function and, and share it with us. Um, you know, Minister Cody, as you alluded to, Andrew and I did meet with you very quickly. I think you were a day or two, it might have been two days uh, into the new job and you graciously took a meeting with us. And, you know, we very much appreciated the opportunity to have the conversation uh, of just how bad our members and, you know, small businesses in our community really were and, and need some support. So, you know, we appreciate, and I've heard from members certainly that they appreciate that this money is going to be available and I recognize that you know this happened on Wednesday and that you've been putting a program together very quickly um, are you able to share any sense of the timing and when that application process will open and then my follow-up to that would just be um, how will government share that and I know we'll be sharing it on your behalf and we'll certainly do our part and we have members who are keen to hear the word go but um, in the meantime yeah do you have any do you have any sense of either of those right now? Um, again, it will be delivered through the Department of Industry, uh, Energy and Technology, the new department, the, 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 the big department, I call it, of, uh, of supports for business and they will be delivering the program. What I understand today, and again, I'm not making the, the announcement today as to all the parameters of the program, but I'm understanding they're working with, um, with what, I, what I will call the, um, the uh, OCIO, which is our uh, technology uh, division within government, uh, and they will be putting in a, uh, an online portal to ensure that you can, uh, you can apply online, so a very quick uh, process. I okay. understand that likely that'll be available and open sometime around the end of October, early November. So these are all subject to change so at this point, but, but this is what I understand. Yeah. And that the program will be, um, it'll be a quick online application and deliver it through the Department of, in of, uh, of uh, Innovation, and Energy, and uh, Technology. Okay, okay. It will be, um, it will be a, a, as I said earlier, a program that will be, you know, from 99 employees below, and then it will, will as we've discussed, Anne-Marie and Andrew, kind of a program that will address, you know, a certain amount of money for the smallest of small and then the medium and then the, the little bit larger will get a little bit more money. But it's, you know, it's only $25 million. Um, but so we want to spread it around as, mu as much as we can, but it will be substantive enough to help to help offset some of the costs that we've, that business has incurred. Yeah, and you know what, Minister, I can tell you, I've had some conversations, you know, over the last 24 hours with a couple of members. I spoke with the owner of, um, you know, of a, of a pretty sizable uh, hair salon, and she was over the moon because that's money that she's invested in plexiglass, and, right. you know, she said she's bought 10,000 masks. That's right. money that she's going to get back for some of those expenditures. Right. And Paul Curry just asked if it was grant or loan. It's grant. It's all grant money to really offset your costs. Right, I guess that's the key part as well, isn't it? So thank you for asking that, Paul. Um, Minister, if I can, and you know, I'm happy for you to chime in and if you want to advance and kind of go through uh, you know, further points of your speech there, but I would love for you to answer you know, around, there's a lot of interest uh, in you know, the appointment of Moya um, and, and what, her, what she and her team are going to do. Um, and you know how the business community participates in that process. Is there anything that you can share with us in the sense of when uh, further members of Dame Moya Green's team will be named and any of the timing around that? 
Um, we're getting a couple of questions, Anne Marie, around the fund. So just let me address that. Absolutely. Your question. Yeah. Um, so can you submit them publicly? Okay. So what I've been asked on this is, will it be retroactive? Yes. It will be. So it's it's going to be a stipend. If I can use that term, because I think people will understand that it'll be just be a set amount. Um, it won't be like you'll have to, you know, get your receipts together or whatever. We'll, we'll, we know that you'll have, be, you'll have been impacted by um, pressures because of COVID. So it'll be a set amount that you'll just get if you, if you are, say, you know, one to 20 employees, tw and I don't know the parameters yet, but if, you know, your certain amount of, of um, of employees you'll get X amount, certain amount more you'll get more. Um, and it'll just be a, a stipend that will that, that you'll be able to apply for. That's what I understand the program will be uh, right at, at this point in time. So I think that answers a number of, uh, of questions there that, uh, uh, and someone says, I hope you're feeling well. Yes, I am, I'm COVID negative. Uh, but it, it does go to remind everybody, I just happened to stay at the same hotel as somebody that was Co that had that it has now been tested positive for COVID. I didn't see this individual, didn't interact with this individual. Uh, I was just, you know, literally in the same premises, big premises with her. Um, so always be mindful of wearing your mask. Always be mindful of washing your hands and stay your distance because that's how that's how you'll keep in you, you and your family safe. And the test is not that bad. If you have to have it, it's not that bad. Trust me, I'll tell you all about it. Um, on uh, Moya, uh, Moya Green's task force, um, when will the other members be? And she, she's, as chair, she's working through that right now. I don't have a definitive time to tell you um, when, when, her, when her, the, the, uh, the terms of reference will be finalized, I, I would think in, in short order, and uh, when it will be uh, expanded to, to include other people. Um, I know that she's considering and working on that as we speak. And she's asked for a lot of a lot of information from the Department of Finance in terms of where we sit right now and what's the economy like, and you know, so we're we're working through some of the requests for information. But I will say this: even with Dane, uh, Moya Green's uh, task force and everything, I want to say to everyone on this call, and again to everyone in in the province, if you have a big bold idea. Don't wait to go on a task force, please. I'm, into, I'm, I'm speaking to Anne Marie and Andrew on an ongoing basis. You can either bring them to me directly or to them. Uh, I was on CBC yesterday crosstalk, and there were a couple of good ideas. You know, people were saying we're talking about. Uh, you know, I think we have to throw everything at the wall. And absolutely, let's. Let's analyze it, let's look at it, let's consider it. Some things are, you know, are not gonna be able to be done or shouldn't be done, uh, but some things will be done. Uh, again, I think we have to have big, bold thinking on this. Yeah, and I love the use of the word bold and reimagine. And you know, the time is now to think that way and you know, for those words to be really meaningful. Um, going back, we just did have a question and I think the couple on the program might trickle in minister as we have this conversation, but there was a question around uh, the fund being retroactive. And I yeah. think as we understood it, it is okay if you've already spent the money. Yes, you are absolutely correct. It is, it, it, it's going, as I said, it's going to be a stipend and it doesn't matter if you spent the money. You, we, we recognize that some people might have spent this as early as March, but we recognize that the, that that's, you know, important for people to have that retroactivity. Um, again, a stipend, and again, I'm gonna remind everyone that as quickly as that portal comes up for you to make your application, make sure you get it in, because it is $25 million, and, and we're not in a position to have it even bigger than that, so. Right, there's another question there from Jason, and I think you just touched on it, Minister, when you said, you know, you can reach out to the Board of Trade and have that active conversation, but there's a particular question there around how can members of the business community put those big, bold ideas forward and how can they engage? Are there, are there any tips or tricks? I'm sure you don't want us tweeting at you, but are there any? No, tweeting at me probably wouldn't work <laughs> as much as, as some other means, but you know, please, I, I, I take anything. It's just, I, I'm always afraid that I miss something and it could be the, it could be the best idea ever. Um, so look, either you can uh, email or talk to Anne-Marie or Andrew, or please email me. 
um, you know, Siobhan Cody at govnl.ca, happy to take any big, bold ideas that you have. You know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Over the last number of years, we in the province have done a really good job of holding the line on expenditures, right? We've only gone up, I think, 2.5% which is phenomenal when you think of the you know the rate of inflation and how in other jurisdictions they've really increased the um, the amount of money that they had to put towards um education uh, sorry healthcare in particular but we've been able to hold it at 2.5% lower than the rate of inflation so we know we have that good expenditure control and when i speak to the bond rating agencies and the banking syndicate they they remark on that so it's the big bold ideas that are going to that are going to help really shape our future, um, and, you know, and, and really deal with those structural challenges that, that 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 we all know exist. And I will say, and I did mention it in my speech, in case you didn't see it, is uh, the Department of Health under uh, Dr. Haggy has been tasked by the by the new Premier Premier Fury to develop. Um, a 10-year health accord, a 10-year health accord. And I think that's really important because that'll, it doesn't mean you're gonna wait 10 years to do something. I'm talking about a health accord that, that looks over time. So it's not over the mandate of one government, it looks over a period of time. And I think that's, uh, that's gonna be really important as well, is how we're gonna deliver healthcare. Right. Um, I, we have two questions, Minister, related to infrastructure. So I've received a question, um, you know, if, if you think Newfoundland and Labrador is going to be able to access any funds for infrastructure from the Federal Infrastructure Bank. Well, I can say that, uh, first of all, let me deal with the provincial government fund. So $609 million uh, to be spent this year, which is kind of, which is a significant amount. And that includes money for um, education and, uh, you know, some schools that are, ha that have to be replenished and rebuilt um, and repairs and maintenance on those schools. It also includes $165 million for bridges and highways, which is a significant investment. And um, there's some money, you know, 15 million, I think, for marine uh, infrastructure. And then again, we're putting an emphasis on healthcare. So you've seen now, um, you know, the, the way in which we're, we're developing uh, healthcare facilities in, in Corner Brook, in St. John's. We've just announced, uh, we've just announced this, the, the bidder on, on that hospital. So there's a significant amount of money, $609 million. Um, allocated from for infrastructure in Newfoundland and Labrador by the provincial government. How do you access the federal government funds? Well, obviously, it, dep it would depend on the program um, that you're that you're referring to. So it's really specific. There there are specific programs available, uh, especially under green uh, green technology, and some there's been a lot of money made available through that. So it really depends on on. Uh, you know, specifics to what you're asking. Okay. I did have another question related to infrastructure, Minister, in the sense of, you know, I guess as we think about uh, being bold and, you know, taking a new look at everything, will, will the provincial government be undertaking a review of its assets and assessing their usefulness and then divesting of any non-essential property? Is that a big, bold idea? Well, it sounds like it could be, it could be one. So I would think that we should put that on the wall and say how, you know, look, look at our, look at our assets and see which ones are meaningful and required for the provincial government to, you know, to make sure that people in our province uh, have the services and supports that they require and making sure that we look at, we look at that. And, you know, it could be, it could be, um, you know, we've just come through COVID and, and maybe there's ways in which we can do, um, we can, reduce our, our footprint in the province. And as you know, in the province, the provincial government has been doing that over the last number of years, is reducing its footprint um, and, and making sure that we are, you know, any, any buildings that we're leasing, for example, making moving them over to buildings that we own and reducing that footprint. So that's another one that we'll put up on the wall and see, and see uh, you know, how, how that works as, and do some analysis on for sure. 
I just noticed that uh, Penny Rowe said to everyone, asked if it was retroactive, and it, it is, uh, Ms. Rowe, it is uh, retroactive in that uh, it'll be a stipend that we'll give to, uh, to small business. Okay. Oh, I think, I think Penny is. You're on mute, Penny. Yeah, Penny, we've kept everyone muted. Do you have a follow-up question? You can certainly, you can certainly type it in the chat there. Uh, Minister, in the meantime, and Penny, if you want to submit a question, please do. Um, you know, when I when I think about the words used on Wednesday, and you know, I think everyone would agree that we understand why it has been called a pandemic budget, um, and there is going to be a lot of work to do. And you've you know, you've highlighted a number of tactics and a number of steps that are going to happen between now and the short six months from now when we'll be back at this again because uh, it is a bit of a unique period in that sense. Do you have any advice for the business community? I mean, I know that you weren't able to share a, a, a plan or, you know, what kind of, what climbing out of this looks like right now, but are, is there any advice that you would share or give to the business community in our province to, you know, to continue um, allowing them to have confident, confidence and, you know, and the, and the drive and the desire to proceed? Well, you know, I think um, one of the media said uh, said on, on Wednesday, and they asked how come there, you know, there was such optimism in the speech, and I, I pointed out that because I'm an optimistic person. So I truly believe in Newfoundland and Labrador that we have incredible opportunity. And look, we have a very strong, um, very, uh, we have tremendous natural resources we have a, a you know an incredible uh, technology we're, we're we're leaders in ocean technology um we have strength in our oil and gas we have strength in our mining we have strength in our technology we have strength in our tourism we have strength in our community sector we have we have so much uh happening in our province and opportunity in forestry and fishery and aquaculture and you know, i i could go on i see nothing but uh, positive outcomes uh, going forward and I um, I think there's been investments in this um, in this budget on immigration investments on ensuring people can have ac you know access to child care so they can get into the workforce there's supports for women to ensure that they are part of the the work you know to be able to uh, to rise and, and lead uh, in our province there's money allocated for infrastructure there's money allocated for communities so i think the investments are there to to sustain um you know and, and bring strength to um, to our business community, we're going to get through pan this pandemic. If I look around across the country, I think we're faring pretty 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 well. I talked to my colleagues in Ontario and in Quebec and and British Columbians in, in Alberta, and they they are concerned. There's no doubt they're very concerned about the impacts of COVID. And I, I you know. I, I, I thank Dr. Hagee and Dr. Fitzgerald almost daily for what they've been able to achieve in keeping us safe. And I think, and I did in my speech, thank Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, because, you know, as I said, when I told you I was COVID free was, look, it's because, you know, we, you know, we you wear your mask, you, you, you wash your hands. So from a business community perspective, look, it's a tough year. I get it. I know it. Take advantage of whatever programs you can take advantage of. Um, try and, you know, make sure you're, you, you focus on as best innovations. And, and, and look, we're innovating right now. Normally, I, we wouldn't be having this interactive conversation. I would be giving you a speech. You'd all clap politely. We'd have a nice lunch. But now we're able to actually have this kind of dialogue. And I think that's improvement. So I, I truly believe that we're we're going to get through this and i i think newfoundland and labrador has an incredibly strong bright future and um i often say this you know anybody anyone who's been to singapore singapore is probably one of the wealthiest countries in the world and they have very little natural resources they have very little land but they are on tidal water and they do have an educated um, population well, we have an educated population. We have a strong university. We have an incredible, um, you know, uh, tra training institutes. We have a strength of our of our people, and we have natural resources, and we have uh, tourism opportunities and culture and arts. 
uh, I think we're the we're the best place in the world. So I I see nothing but uh, but but good things ahead for us. Well, thank you for that perspective. I have another question relating to another, I think, bold idea. And, you know, I think we would all agree that um, COVID, much like this arrangement here today and us gathering in this way, COVID has proved to us what we're capable of. And, you know, by necessity has forced us into behaving different ways. And some of those are probably around to stay for the long term. And this next question, I, I believe, is, is one such example. So we're wondering if the provincial government intends to capitalize on the possible cost savings of e-health services and delivering, you know, what would be typically face-to-face -face interactions and services through the electronic means. Well, certainly you saw that during COVID. And um, as you know, uh, Minister Hagee has already uh, made a move with, um, with nurse practitioners and we put $3.3 million in the budget to allow that program to be expanded, to allow um, nurse practitioners on 811 so that when you call 811, you have access to, uh, to nurse practitioners. And you know, there's also um, technology there to support digital learning. Uh, there's also money there uh, to ensure that we deliver healthcare services a little differently. I don't know if anyone here accessed uh, your family doctor during COVID. You could pick up the phone. It was fabulous, actually. Mm -hmm. The phone spoke to, spoke with my family doc. She told me what I had to do, and I, it, it was it was really really um, a, a positive experience for me personally. I think that's. Uh, all part of telemedicine. Remember that Newfoundland and Labrador was a leader in telemedicine through the Memorial University uh, um, uh, Medical School. So I would I would think that that will be very desirable moving forward, and it allows you know access no matter where you are in the province. So yeah, that's I I, I personally think that's part of our ten year health care cord. I think it's part of the delivery of the services and part of maintaining um, maintaining a breadth of, of geography in Newfoundland and Labrador without having to have true bricks and mortars in every every nook and cranny too. Right. Right. Yeah. Great examples of being forced to behave differently, I suppose. Uh, another question, Minister, around um, if the province, does the province have kind of a new version, a COVID plan, if you will, for how budget consultations will take place as we approach the next budget? Well, day, day one after the last yeah. one. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> So, um, you know, I would think that we'll probably doing, be doing a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of, uh, a lot of telecommunications, uh, telephony. Uh, so I, I would expect that. But I also think that we'll, I, I would like to convene more round tables and, um, and hear some of those bold ideas. Um, so I'll be looking to do things a little differently, but the traditional, what I'm going to say, consultation, consultation through the, you know, the Department of, of, uh, of, uh, a uh, public, what's it called? Uh, public engagement. Yeah. Uh, public engagement. We'll 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 certainly uh, we'll certainly talk to them and get their expertise on how we'll reach out to the to the entire province. But you know, forums like this, conversations with uh, with small groups, I think will be very beneficial. And as you as you may know, we're going to have to start very quickly on on that budgeting process because the next budget is only six months away. So we don't have the uh, we don't have a whole lot of time to get to some of those uh, to some of, through, through through those kind of discussions. So we're going to move at the speed of light. Yes, I imagine. I uh, I would look forward to seeing a an, a wall in your office full of sticky notes with your big bold ideas. Um, we did have a follow-up from Penny on her previous question, and I, I guess this would be tied to the, um, the five million that has been made available for community programs. And so she says that you mentioned, uh, you know, they may not have spent resources, but would like support and would need support now. They may not have employees either. Would they still be eligible? Yes, my understanding is, Penny, because when, when we thought about those supports and we thought about the business community and then we thought, well, we have this whole community sector that they, they, will, we, they will have a portal to be able to go in and apply 
for a stipend as well. And uh, I don't think it's rank, it, it, it's not related to employees at all. It's related to the fact that they are community sector, um, you know, and they and they need supports as well. So, uh, yes, in the coming days, you'll hear more about that uh, about that program. And as I said, they're just being rolled out from a department. So I'm not here to kind of steal their thunder, but I'm kind of letting you know that yes, that they'll there is there's a way and a means for community sector to uh, to be able to access that. Okay, and then uh, Minister, there was the 25 million uh, that was set aside a couple of months ago for the tourism and hospitality industry. And then you made an announcement on Wednesday where that has been expanded on. Are you able to share that with us? Yes, we, they've expanded the uh, criteria to allow those people in the arts to be able to access that fund as well, at arts and musicians. So they'll be able to access that fund. Um, through the same portal as the tourism portal. So that's already established. So they'll be able to access it right through there. Okay. Um, and, you know, if there is anyone else uh, that does have a question, we've certainly, we've, uh, we have been able to get through all of the ones that have been entered in the chat there. So I would certainly invite, we do have a few minutes left, uh, if there are any additional questions. Um, Minister, I know that it was, um, you know, it was noteworthy on Wednesday that the deficit was slightly lower than what we were anticipating, and I believe even than what Minister Osborne reported during the July fiscal update. Are you able to expand on that and, and share the reason as to why? So a couple of things before we move into that. I just also want to say for the arts is that we increased the additional funding for arts NL by a million dollars and there's four million dollars to support film and television. So I think that might right. be your membership as well and uh, and broadening that eligibility under the tourism support program to include professional artists and musicians impacted by COVID-19. And Penny, um, absolutely on the community sector, I think it's important and we recognize the great work that you've done and, and the community sector is that third pillar as you keep, uh, it keep making sure that we're all aware. Um, I'm sorry, now I've forgotten your question. That's okay about the deficit, and it oh. was a bit it was a bit lower than we anticipated. Right. So in July, uh, it was estimated that it would be two one four seven two billion one hundred forty seven million dollars. Tremendous number, um, but we were able to get that lower than that. It's one it's one billion eight four. Um, so one, uh, and we were able to do that mostly because what we've seen is the revenues increase. So oil and gas, we had anticipated in July that, re that, that oil and gas would be at $35, um, but through the 11 different uh, groups that do this kind of professional analysis, they said that the price of oil would be around $39. Uh, so that's what, that's what changed those, uh, those budget numbers. And I will say this, because I think it's important for us all to be proud of this. Even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, that's not the highest deficit we've ever had. So, you know, I think that's good. We've, we are doing our work. We are turning over every dollar three times, as my mother would say, and making sure that we're spending wisely. Okay. Minister Cody, I can't believe the amount of content and things that you just got through in the last 50 minutes. So I... Uh, you definitely have learned the numbers because you're rhyming them up so quickly. Um, I, I thank you for participating here today with us. I'll do one last call out and see if there are any additional questions, if anyone has anything that they would like, they would like to hear the minister respond to. Uh, and, and there's one coming in there now, minister, from John. Um, he's wondering if there's any expectation of Ottawa as to increased federal payments, either equalization or fiscal stabilization. Um, John, great to see great to see you on the on the call, and um, I look forward to catching up with you. Um, on equalization, I, we, you know, we, we keep bringing it forward, obviously, and 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 making a, a case for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there, you know, there's statutory times they actually look at. Um, uh, that, that they actually look at equalization formula and look, we can talk about the equalization formula and how non-renewable shouldn't be in the, in the formula and how it has to all change. Um, but right now, you know, the statutory time limit, I think is 24. So 
but we are talking to the federal government as recently as last Friday on the fiscal stabilization fund and talking about uh, how they can make those improvements to the fund. I'm joined by a chorus of others across the country, as you can appreciate, and um, and we'll keep uh, we'll keep pressing them on the fiscal stabilization fund as we are on some of the other uh, key issues. Uh, we want to make sure they're going to keep a version of the wage subsidy program. We were successful in that. We want them to extend the rent program and and make it less dependent on uh, on. Uh, on having uh, the, the landlords apply for that program and, and allow for those that are the, those that are renting to apply for that program. So I have an ongoing discussion with uh, Minister Friedland, and we'll raise it uh, raise it every single time I speak to her as a, as the requirement of not only changing the equalization formula and how that whole program works, um, but also on the fiscal stabilization fund. It's important. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a topic that gets brought up in many, many places in many rooms right now. Um, Minister, I know, again, you've touched on, you know, the criteria is probably still a little bit of work in, in progress, but I just want to confirm for someone that did send a message, uh, startup companies are eligible to apply for that $25 million in their portion. Is that correct? What you refer, of, refer to a startup, have they started... Like so I guess it would, yeah, I guess it would be just a relatively new, is there a certain length of time that a business would have had to be in business? Um, again, I'd have to refer to the yeah. department on that, but it would, de it would depend on the definition of startup. I, so that would be something that as the program uh, unfolds, uh, if you uh, talk, to, in, you talk to, the, to the department and, and see uh, if, if the definition can uh, apply to that particular company. Okay, we'll do that and we'll share that with our members. Are there any final thoughts that you would like to to leave us with or any kind of the yeah. theme that you'd like to impart? I, I did say this. I, I will say this and I think it was important. And I did say it on, on, uh, on budget day and I, I'll say it again now. You know, we're going to reimagine our government. I think it's very important to all of us. I think there's a sense of pride for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians in making sure that, as my mother would say again, you got to cut the cloth to suit the garment to get our fiscal house in order to to ensure that what we're doing is uh, is in the best efforts of, of everyone in, in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, I think we have to you know continue to uh, focus on the economy, continue to keep that you know diversification um, uh, happening in the province. We have a vibrant ocean industries, we have vibrant technology, you know tourism, arts. We have so many um, opportunities here in the province and growth potential in the province. And I will say that the, the government is also focused on immigration, um, making sure that if you know the natural if, if natural expansion doesn't occur, that we, we do welcome that we're a welcoming place for immigration and welcoming Newfoundlanders and Labradorians back home. You know, I really do believe that uh, you know we we'll move forward with a great strength and a great vigor. And I'm sincere in that, or, or if I wasn't sincere in, in it, I wouldn't be here trying to make that difference. And so I encourage you to be part of that and to feel the uh, enthusiasm that I have for this place and know that yes, it is very difficult times right now. We are in the middle of COVID, but uh, but we're working our way through it and we're helping each other uh, through it. And once we're through that, then there is uh, there's nowhere to go um, but up for Newfoundland and Labrador and, uh, and and expand the possibilities that we have here. Well, thank you. I'd like to thank you for your time today and in making yourself available and answering these questions and providing us with a breakdown of the budget. I'd also like to thank you for the time that you've made available for the St. John's Board of Trade and in having the ongoing discussions and in recognizing the value of business in Newfoundland and Labrador. We look forward to being a part of the ongoing discussions and look forward to helping you put post-it notes on your wall with big bold ideas. Well, I look forward to it as well. And, and, and look, you have to remember, I, you know, 20 or more than 25 years ago, okay, I'm aging myself now, but I was president of the Board of Trade. So I have deep roots and respect and appreciate 
the value of having this kind of dialogue and this conversation. So I'm always available to you and uh, appreciate those big, bold ideas and, and, uh, and look forward to working with you over the next six months as we move towards a, a, a new day, a post, what I, I don't call it post COVID, I call it living with COVID until we have a vaccine, that's what we're gonna have to do. That is the reality. Well, we look forward to it as well. So thank you, Minister Cody. Okay, thank you. It's like Beverly Hillbillies will all wait. <laughs> Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. You as well. Take care. Bye-bye.